What's going down everybody? Welcome to the first of the Altered Art tutorial videos. We're gonna kick things off today with just a kind of overview of not only my workspace, my office, my studio, whatever you wanna call it, but also some basic supplies, what they cost, what you need, and maybe what you don't need or what you don't need to do because I see a lot of things online uh, various altered art groups on Facebook or tutorials on from years ago on YouTube or whatever that uh, that uh, you don't need to do. So we're gonna cover a bunch of that kind of stuff today. This is it. The windows are closed because it's sunny out and the sun is behind me, so it's usually a lot more well lit in here. Number one, so you're not like real close up squinting and stuff well lit. I have, and you'll see once the camera turns, I've got a light overhead, like a regular light that's in a house, and then I've got I don't know if you can see this this one and it's adjustable I can aim that where I want I've got another one of these right here and then I've got one that's off this big one right here this has got two light bulbs in it as well and that is to give me a big wash of light the overhead one a big wash of light this one kind of functions as a wash as well and then this one is right exactly on what I'm working on so number one light if you can't see what you're doing you can't sharpen lines you can't color match you can't do anything and if you can't do any of that then you might as well not even be doing anything next thing cleanliness everything has to stay clean again once it once we turn and pan down you're gonna see it doesn't look clean but all the paint that you see is dry and the paper towels are there for a reason cleanliness doesn't just stop at like paper towels and and paint and and stuff your palette, keep it clean. I see pictures of people posting cards all the time. Dirty palettes, dirty workspaces. When you're mixing paint and there's a color of paint underneath that might actually make the color of paint look different that you're mixing. And then when you put it on the card, it doesn't match. So clean palette, clean piece of paper to start with. Next thing, brushes clean brushes now there's a couple ways to do this of course all the paint i'm going to show you today is all water-based but for 12 bucks or whatever you can go to home depot you can get like a, i don't have it in here because it's all dirty and rusty it's in my garage you can get a like a metal tin of acetone i've found that acetone is the best chemical that you can sort of touch with your hands it's fine like you're not going to get cancer acetone it's in like the paint aisle with the paint thinners. It's in the same aisle as Varsol, which also works. Paint thinner also works, but because we're using water-based stuff, like we don't really need paint thinner. We don't need Varsol to take any like oil-based chemicals off because uh, everything we're using is water-based. And acetone's not only gonna get rid of paint out of your brushes, it's also gonna help with a future thing I'm gonna show you with blanking a card or blanking a portion of a card because you don't need to blank the card. So that's that. This brush has been cleaned with acetone. I wish you could see it better, but my my camera just won't focus on it and not me. I don't know. Does that work? I don't know. That's a brush that's been cleaned, even though it's like the bristles are still greenish, bluish. It, uh, it's been cleaned. So after we talk about cleanliness, let's look at the actual workstation. So I'm going to pan the camera down. I don't know if it's going to be awkward or if I'll just cut it out. So how's that? I don't know. You can see the workstation, you, but you can see uh, all the things that I see, and that's the important part. So normally, this light would be pulled a little bit forward. And see how I can I can aim it to be wherever I want it to be. And my water's usually sitting there, and the light is usually like pulled forward, so it's like right whoosh, right there, and my head is like like this, all right? So I'm directly over top with the with the light. Okay, then I've got paper towels all around, not because something's gonna spill or I'm, I'm, I think it's gonna spill or not because it's messy, but when you're moving like from your palette to maybe the water, you might get too much water on your brush and you might just wanna dab it, right? Or after you like clean your brush all off and it's clean but it's still wet, if you wanna introduce a new color onto the brush, you have to, mostly you have to do it with a, a dry brush. So I would I would take the brush and I would do this with it. And you can see how discolored that paper towel is there from just the paint water being wiped off on this paper towel. So it's not actually dirty, that's just the color of the paint water after, after a certain amount of time. And of course there's layers and layers of it just to make sure it doesn't get through onto the table or whatever. So usually these brushes are like, 
laid out like that. So if I need to switch brushes, that's a common thing going from something like this to something like this. Anyways, they're all there. But the number one question that I always get is, what kind of paint, what kind of paint, what kind of paint? So let's go over the paint real quick. We've, we've seen the setup, we've got the palette, we've got a cup for water, we've got some supplies, we've got some lights, everything's clean. Let's go over some paint. First thing I wanna do, the three colors that you will 100% need all the time. You'll almost need white, black, and brown on every single, every single card. Every one, even cards that are like, you don't even think you need them. You need white, you need black, you need brown. Every one. These two are golden, golden fluid acrylics or light body. They come from Michaels. They're about 10 or 11 bucks per vial. So this is like one ounce. It's like 11 bucks. And when you look at all of the ones I have here, plus the ones that are in the thing over there, I've got probably $150 worth of paint. Do you need that much? No. You need a black, you need a white, you need a brown. I would recommend, if you want to start getting into it, I would recommend, this is Deco Art. This also comes from Michaels. That's what the new ones look like. This is what the old one looks like. Deco Art, Americana. Originally, I think they have this like in their woodworking section. It's for wood, but it's an acrylic-based paint and it's fairly light. Regardless of what you have to buy, you're going to have to add water to it anyways because it's all too thick. These are like two bucks and they're like bigger. The difference is these are very coarse. They're going to wear down the, the, the bristles of your brush. They're going to wear them down. And this stuff doesn't have as high of a pigment load in it. So what that means is the paint is like a goop. You've got your goop and then there's a pigment in it to colorize it. These ones per ounce of goop, there's more pigment in it. These ones... Per ounce of goop, there is less pigment in it. And what that means really is when you like thin them out with water to d try and do like a really wide wash of color, you can't thin them out as much. So they might take more layers to do. Uh, you can't thin them out as much without like s some of the water and the goop kind of coming out of mixture. But that's something really advanced. Like if you're not doing, if you're not doing something like this, I don't know if you can even see that. If you're not doing something like that, crap, there it is. If you're not doing something like that, you're not going to need, like it's not going to be a, a big deal. So two bucks, 12 bucks. It's fine. Like either or are fine. The other thing I want to mention, this is actually from a gaming store. This is model color. It's made by Vallejo. Apparently this is like a popular paint for painting like miniatures. I use it for my black just because it's really shiny. If you're going to use it, just be aware that it does dry very rubbery and it can be hard to clean up off the card compared to the art deco or the deco art stuff or the, the, the golden stuff. So Vallejo paint also works. Next, brushes. Two things. You can go out and you can individually buy all the brushes that you want. Cool. They can get quite expensive. This brush is like $11 and it's tiny. This one's like eight bucks or whatever. And it's a little bit bigger. This one's a little bit bigger. This one's a little bit bigger. Okay, fine. Or you can go to Michael's again or whatever craft store you go to. Get something like this. This is a nine piece one. It comes with a plastic palette built in that you can just like cut out with scissors. And this was like, this whole thing was like eight bucks. So you get a palette, you get nine brushes for eight bucks. And then you don't have to buy a palette either but I have this one because I like a white one I like a white palette to when I do mix colors on the palette then I can see what the color accurately looks like because it's white versus something that's see-through if I'm mixing on like my brown desk or if it was like over here on the brown then I'm mixing on top of brown and I don't like that as much so everybody thinks you need real tiny brushes you don't need super small brushes Small brushes do certainly help for some very fine line work. I don't know if you can see how small that is, but it's tiny. Sorry, it's not focused, but ones like this, it's a little bit bigger. This is a, a 10-0 versus an 18-0 versus a, I think this is like a number, a number two. This is fine too. 
You just got to learn how to use it. And good rule of thumb is the longer the bristles, the longer the bristles, the more paint the brush is going to hold, the more paint it's going to take to soak into the brush before you can actually paint with it. So you can't just expect to take a little dab of paint with this brush and then paint because the brush is going to soak in all the paint and then you're going to go and touch the card and nothing's going to come out. So just be aware with a big brush like this, you'll, you'll, you'll use a lot of paint. But in some circumstances, that is what you want. Like certain art styles do, like when you're trying to do an altered art extension, a border extension, you're going to want this because it gives you the desired look compared to something small like that. That's that. This brush is extremely worn down. It's very worn down. I have a new one. I posted on Twitter a while back the difference. There's, there's, this one's the new one. This one's the new one. There's the old one side by side. That's how worn down they get. And again, this Deco Art paint is very coarse. The pigment in it is like sandpaper on these brushes and you can see what it does. So just be prepared that over time, you'll wear down your brushes with this. But again, I paint over 20 cards a week. If you're new, you might paint one or two cards a week. This brush will last you four years. Like, doesn't matter. So that's brushes. Really, by and large, I use my super fine lining one, the, the really tiny one for like detail work and sticks and like just little dots of color. I use a little bit bigger one for like painting rocks and like I load it up with lots of water to do clouds. I use this one, this big fat guy to blend. What you do is you load it up, you mix the color and you load it up a little bit and then like most of the paint gets rubbed off on the, on the paper and you just kind of paint it on really gently. It makes for blending skies and like water and stuff. This one I use for doing the bottoms like in black because it's very close to the right width. So those are, the, those are the paints, those are the brushes. That is the workstation. I've got a palette. I'm gonna do a second video in a day or two or, or early next week on some of the more advanced tools here. Like I've got some toothpicks and a knife and some, some more expensive markers and stuff. So stay tuned for that. This is part one. Part two will be coming out shortly. Big thanks to all the patrons that make it possible. I can't do it without you. I really can't. And for anybody who isn't a patron, you're on the Patreon page. So consider pledging. There are benefits. Just look wherever on the page they are and stay tuned for more.